Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the maximum value uh, for our objective function, which is p equals 2x plus y. And to do that, we have a list of constraints. And we are going to want to graph those constraints, identify the feasible region, and then identify vertices, points, um, x and y, that are, are constructed from the intersection of our, con of our lines of constraint that satisfy all of, our, um, satisfy all of the constraints within our feasible region. So uh, the first thing we want to do is graph our lines. And we see here, we like when we have x is greater than or equal to 0 or y is greater than or equal to 0, because those are our x and our y axes. So all values that are greater than x, well, that's going to be pointing above. And all values that are uh, greater than y, or y is greater than 0, that's going to be points that are going to be going to the right. x is equal to, I'm sorry, I switched those around. x is greater than or equal to 0 is going to be your vertical line taking points to your right. y is greater than or equal to 0 is going to be your x-axis for points that are going up, because each of those axes are equal to 0 when you graph them. Just like you'd graph x equals 0, y equals 0, but now we're just pointing the arrows um, to what's going to make them sense. Then the next thing we need to do is now graph our other two constraints, which I have 3x plus y is less than or equal to 7. So to graph this, I'm simply just going to write this in, um, simply going to write this in our slope intercept form. So here I can say my y axis is at 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then my slope is uh, negative 3, so I can rewrite that as negative 3 over 1. I'm going to want to graph this down towards my other two um, uh, constraints. So I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. So 1, 2, 3, over 1. 1, 2, 3, over 1. Oops. And then my next value here, uh, the next equation is x plus 2y is less than or equal to 9. So now to go and graph that, I subtract the x here. And I have 2y is less than or equal to negative x plus 9. Now to solve for y, I'll divide by 2. And I get y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus, I could do 9 halves, or I could rewrite that as 4.5. And a lot of times I like to use decimals when graphing, even though I hate decimals. I like, prefer, keep things in fractions. A lot of times with graphing, you know, it's helpful to know that, oh, my y-intercept is at 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 4.5 would be right in the middle. Now I'm just going to still, from there, I'm going to go to the middle point of the next one over 1. Middle point of the next line over 2. Down 1. Oh, it should be like over there. Middle point of the next one. Down one. Middle point of the next one. Down one. Oh, over two. Why did I not do that? All right. So down one over two. One, two. Down one. Down one over two. Down one over two. Down one over two. And then down one, down one over two. Wow, my graph is really far off here. Um, and let's go and see. These are all x's less than or equal to this one. And this one was y is less than or equal to. So therefore, I'm dealing with these two boundary lines are going to provide me with this feasible region, which is right inside of here. So basically, I need to make sure I can determine what this you know, point is that they're intersecting at. And it looks like, per my graph, that's at the point um, 7. So that'd be over 1, over 1, 2, 3, down 3, over 1. So that looks like that at the point uh, 6, 5, 4, 1. So 1, comma 4. So let's just verify that's a point for uh, both of these. <sighs> Negative 12, that's going to be 5 and 1. Oh, 4 comma 1. No, 1 comma 4. So I put in a 1, 4. That works for that one. Yes. So to verify this point, even though, like, like I said, my graph is really, really off right here, um, 
per my graph, this point is at 1 comma 4. Now, if I plug in a 1 in for x, I have negative 3 times 1. Um, negative, one th negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3, plus 7 is 4. And then the y coordinate is 4. So 4 is less than or equal to 4, so it works. If I plug it into here, I plug in a 1. Negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half, or negative 0.5, plus 4 is 4. Again, 4 is, is uh, y is 4, so then 4 is less than or equal to 4, so that point works. The next one here is my y-intercept, which is at 4.5. So I'll write 4.5 comma 0. And this next one is I'm going to be following this line here. So if I go down, down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Now for the next point, I'd go down 3 again, 1, 2, 3, over 1. So it's between 1, 2, and 3. So it's between 2 and 3. Um, so the way I can identify what exactly that point is, is that point is when x is equal to 0. So I'm going to go back to this equation that produced that line, where I have the 3x plus y is less than or equal to 0. I'm going to say, all right, well, what about when my x value is, z or is equal to 7? What about, or not when 0, I'm sorry, when my y is equal to 7, or my y is equal to 0. So I'll do 3 times x plus 0 is less than or equal to 7. And then 3x is less than or equal to 7. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is less than or equal to 7 thirds. So my x coordinate is 7 thirds comma 0. What are you doing? Oh, I wrote that wrong. Sorry about that. OK, so now let's go ahead and determine. My apologies, take a little while. But hopefully you guys understand, you know, when you're dealing with, um, when you're dealing with fractions, a lot of times, you know, especially when you're dealing with your graph, where sometimes it can be, you know, is this right or wrong? I can always determine, what is that point? Well, that's the y-intercept. So I plugged y, 0 in for y into that equation of that constraint line to be able to determine what the x value was. The same thing here, you know, I was pretty sure the coordinate was 1 comma 4. But to verify, I plugged in x and y into both of those equations to make sure it worked. And then this one I just rewrote. It should be x0, y is 4.5. So now let's go and plug them in into my objective function to obtain the maximum value. So therefore, I have p equals 2 times 1 plus 4. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 4 is going to be 6. Then I'll do 0 comma 4.5. And that's going to be p is equal to 2 times 0 plus 4.5. Well, p is equal to 2 times 0 is 0. And that's 4.5. And then the last one would be 7 thirds, uh, comma 0. And that's going to be p equals 2 times 7 thirds plus 0. Well, let's just go ahead and like, take a look at this. p equals 2 times, put that over a fraction, that's going to be 14 over 3 plus 0. Now, does 3 go into 14 more than 6 times? No, 3 goes into 14 only 4 times with the remainder of 2. So therefore, we can say that this is our objective point, 1 comma 4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine, or it's your maximum, not your objective point, your maximum value, which would be 1 comma 4. Thanks.